Okay, so the last injection moulding, plastic injection moulding machine I made was at um, a fairly conventional construction where there's a an injector barrel with a hole in and a piston, which simplistically looks like that. There's um, a heater jacket and a temperature sensor. The heater jacket and the temperature sensor are connected to some kind of a control box with a display and uh, control buttons, some user interface on there, um, which enable you to set and control the temperature of the, of the plastic mount in here. Um, and this all sits on top of a mold arrangement and this is where you inject your plastic and make your parts. Um, in order for this to work, you also need a support structure uh, around the whole thing. So you'll need a base plate, you'll need um, some kind of a riser here, you'll need to support the, um, the injector somehow, you'll need um, a linear bearing for the um, plunger to go through, and you'll need some kind of a cunning linkage system and a handle which you then pull down in order to make the plunger go down, extrude the plastic and so on. That's fine, it works perfectly well, it's what most machines look like. Um, it just has a couple of downsides. One is that you um, have to make all this support structure. You have to make this, you have to make this, and this, and this, uh, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Um, so there's lots of construction involved, that means time and materials and money. Um, the second is they tend to be quite bulky, they sit on the bench taking up space and if, like me, you work in a shed, that, that's a significant issue. Um, there has been an attempt um, by LNS Technologies in America to get around that overhead by observing the fact that most shed dwelling fellows have a press drill or a drill press. Um, there's the, the, the chuck, um, there's a rotary spider type handle normally that you rotate to raise and lower the chuck um, and that is pretty much the same as this so you can repurpose this by sticking um, a piston up in there having some kind of a, uh, well the same pretty much, uh, injector here arranging for some way to support it uh, and then putting your mould under there as you normally would and, and making your part um, LNS technologies make this as a bottle, so this whole thing here is a bottle kind of construction which hangs from the drill press and they have cables that run to a control box which is kept elsewhere. Um, that's fine, I considered making one along those broad lines but I don't really like the fact that these cables are out in the workshop, that they are flexed regularly, this, this all gets, this gets hot. Um, so I thought there might be a better way set about designing one and building one and I've done it and tested it and here it is so um, I'll just check we can see that, yeah we can so this is um, where the uh, column of the column drill or drill press goes it's um, attached and tightened via these uh, nuts on this U-bolt um, it's kept in uh, perpendicular registration with this slot here um, the injector is pretty much the same as it was before um, here it is and there's a control box here and that all works fine I'll just show you I will make another video uh, of it in action but for now oh I should say this just plugs into a normal um, UK mains uh, mains unit so we'll plug it in over here I'll show you uh, can you see the display there yes you can We'll turn that on. So it goes through a standard setup sequence um, and then it's off and running. This is the temperature that's ambient right now in the in the heater. This is the temperature that we've set and we can move it up and down very straightforwardly. And you'd set this temperature based on the plastic that you were using. Um, and you get a very accurate control of the temperature through this digital system. That's that's all great. Let's disconnect that. So it works, I've used it a couple of times. You put this piston in the column drill and you arrange to line this thing up so that would be in the, in the column. You use the wing nuts here to in align this underneath the piston's axis. So um, you, there's leeway to move this in and out. 
Um, the wiring disappears into this box here, into the support structure. Um, comes along with a nice welded support here, and there's an internal, another metal plate in there, so this is all held very sturdily. Um, I'm very pleased with the injector uh, myself, it's really over engineered. This is a stainless steel ring here on the top with a funnel to allow you to tip your pellets in nice and easily. It's removable, located on these um, grub screws. Um, which bite into some recesses in the central barrel, which is this thing here. This is also stainless steel. The bottom ring again is stainless steel. Um, I'm probably looking at covering the outside in a protective mesh just to reduce the dangers of burning yourself slightly. Um, all the wiring disappears internally into, into the, uh, the support structure and emerges into the box with no external interruption. So it's really portable, it's self-contained. It's robust, chuck it in a cupboard, fish it out when you're ready to use it, or even leave it attached to the drill press because you can swing it out the way and use the drill press as a drill press and then swing it back into place and you're ready to go, pop that in your chuck, uh, ready to go injection moulding again. Okay, so when we're ready, pull down on that, that's it, wait for a little while. Ease off on the pressure, but don't lift it up. Pull that out. It's quite hot, so be careful. Separate the two halves of the mould. And there you can see the part inside for the first time. That needs to come out, be removed quite carefully. We'll cut the flashing off first. and then gently ease the part out. Sometimes it's best to hit it from behind, sometimes it's best to lever it out from the front. It can be a bit tricky, um, but that's part of clever mole design. Anyway, there's the part.